Jim Harney is a small business owner from Cumberland County. He's running for governor in the Republican primary here in campaign 2012. Thank you, Mr. Harney, for being on the show. Thank you, Kelly. I looked over all your literature and I read an article you had done or an interview with the Fevel Observer saying uh, you're offering a populist message and you're for the little guy. Who is that little guy you speak of? Well, I'm included in that. I've always felt that I'm a I'm just a normal American, just like most everybody else I know. And I, I want to represent just the average Joe, just like I am. What's the difference in a guy like you representing the average Joe and another candidate with more professional political credentials representing the average Joe? I feel the effects of all decisions by politicians, just like every other citizen out there. And getting together with friends, and whether we're playing ball or during business or whatever, and we all talk about those things, and we all... You know, we, we feel we need somebody in there that will represent the, how our decisions affect just the average person. You don't think that's even occurring right now in North Carolina politics? No. But when you have politicians in there that are making multi-million dollars and what have you, the, the decisions that they make, that doesn't affect them the way it does the average person. There are many, many small business owners throughout North Carolina. All of them could run for governor, at least most of them could. But you decided to run for governor in a grassroots campaign. So how did you, how did you walk yourself up into this to go down to Raleigh and file to run? I've been thinking about this for years. And with all the vetoes that went on last year, um, that was really the final decision to do it. Uh, I went to our uh, county GOP meeting. It was on a Tuesday night. And I told him, I said, tomorrow morning, I'm going to go down and file for governor. Nobody believed me. I passed out where I stood and everything to everybody in that meeting, and the next day I went down and I filed. Did you get support from your local Republicans, or did they tell you to forget about it? There's been a, there's been a gentleman running for four years for this office. Well, of course, Pat McCrory's put a, a, a lot of effort and everything into it, so it was, you know, le leave it to that. Now that I'm in there and now that I, things are moving on, I'm getting more and more support. Yeah, your campaign seems to be focused on the economy, which is jobs, job creation. As of right now, we talk in early 2012. How's the economy been looking since our last major election in 2008? Well, the economy's, you know, you read reports where they say, you know, things have gone up or, or what have you. I, I haven't seen anything going up. I haven't seen, everybody's still, we still have just, you know, just about the same amount of people on unemployment and new jobs are not coming into the state. Well, if you're governor, what plan do you present to the House and Senate in North Carolina to start creating some jobs to put the economy back on the right track? Well, no, number one goal I think would benefit the citizens and, and any type of business is to uh, eliminate property tax. By eliminating property tax, it, it'll help build businesses that are already here that you can invest more into their businesses. Also, outside businesses will look into coming into North Carolina then without that property tax. And on the other side, it protects the citizens from forced annexations. In the past, some cities have practiced forced annexation, um, putting more taxes on the people. In a, in a bad economy, they don't need more taxes, and they're not going to receive services for 15 to 20 years that they're being taxed for. So I think eliminating the property tax would be the first thing to look at. Okay, what do you do with the lost revenue? Do you trim government services, school services, to meet the, the reduction in revenue that will be generated from a lost or not generated from a lost property tax? Or do you find other ways to pay for what's already out there working in your local community? Well, I believe in a, f a flat fare tax for everybody. And that flat fare tax would include those fees from the property tax in that tax. Because, uh, you know, understanding that property tax goes to the local community. It goes to the police departments, fire departments, EMS, some, you know, teachers and, and what have you. But they need that money. I'm not eliminating that. We're just reorganizing it, freeing up people's properties. So in the future, when people are retired and, and what have you, they can enjoy life without still being burdened with not only their property, because it's taxed. Yeah, I heard you use the word flat fair to tax, a flat fair tax. Is Correct. it, is it, there's a brand name called a fair tax out there. It's basically a, a big sales tax within, and you take away all the other taxes. Right. Is that what you're talking about, flat fair tax? Are you talking about a flat, fairer income style tax? It would probably be, because, of course, I, I, I've written up three different options for it to, you know, present if I was to be elected. Um, the first option would be a flat income tax across the board, and that would include everything to cover all government taxes from the counties up to the state. Now, Republicans 
will say that their campaign against that temporary sales tax, for instance, in 2010, was a key engine in driving them into majorities in both the state house and the state senate. But this flat fare tax proposal that you're presenting has that feel a bit to it of an extra sales tax. How do you get around the rhetoric to say, well, I'm, I'm taking away the property tax and adding a sort of a sales tax. How do you get around that and well, the opposition that you would likely hear in Raleigh about? Well, it's actually the income tax. Right. It's actually the state income tax would be changed to a flat fare tax. It's not a, an additional tax put on the people. Uh, car taxes, yes or no, is a revenue stream. It seemed like I saw a little bit of apprehension from the Harney campaign about how vehicles are... Oh, handled in that manner. Registering a vehicle every year. Why? Nothing's changed. It's, it's still yours. You know, why do we register vehicles every year? Mm -hmm. it, it's, a, it's a waste. So what, so what I'm saying, all these tax reform proposals you're saying, bring them all into one lump and then have one source to, of a method of collecting taxes that would offset these all myriad other taxes we have to pay. Correct. So cut one check, cover all the bases. Right now, you know, when people talk about the percentage of taxes they pay, you know, somebody might say, hey, I pay 25%, 30%. They're only talking about income taxes. They're not talking about every single other tax that we pay out there. How realistic would it be to get the legislature to go along with such fundamental tax reform? Whether it's, if it's not yours, it's another form that changes the way we pay taxes here. Well, there's a whole grassroots of people that are running for different offices from county on up to through all the other state offices, and we all pretty much have the same kind of visions and goals. Mm -hmm. And if it comes out that the grassroots wins this, mm -hmm. I think the people are going to see a big change. Now, you're opposed to property taxes. You're opposed to car taxes, personal property taxes. The income tax itself, you're tweaking. But what is your feeling towards the concept of people paying income taxes at the state level? Are you in favor of that, or is it, or is it just flat and that's is no progressive nature of the income tax code? Correct. It, it all would just be one flat tax across the board for the for the state, and that money that's collected would be for every single level. Now, if you're if if you're nominated, there could be someone on the other side who proposes the idea of implementing a partial penny sales tax to help the state get through a hump, to create some jobs at the state level, and in that opinion get economic vitality going again through an extra penny or so sales tax, maybe a little less than that. What's the role of sales taxes, both temporary, and I would say in a temporary setting, because that's what North Carolina voters have seen happen in past years. Right. Good, good idea to get us through a hump? I'm totally against any type of tax increase. However, once looking into all the information that's out there to see what it would do, you, you know, you always have to be open for other ideas. Mm. Right now, as, where I, as I sit here, I'm against any type of tax increase. North Carolina is one of the highest tax states in, in, in the United States. We don't need to keep taxing the people. We need to properly allocate what we already have and make sure it gets to where it's supposed to go. And that's what needs to be looked at. Are you fine with the current level of taxation in North Carolina? You're certainly opposed to hikes. Is, is, are things taxed at about the right level? I would rather keep them where they're at than talk about any raises. Now let's move over to education, public education. There is a traditional system that now charter schools are going to begin opening. And some see that as a direct competition to that traditional model. How do you see the traditional public school system? And how do you see charter schools fitting in? Well, it comes from the Constitution that the state is required to offer that education. Um, other charter schools or whatever want to open up and, and, and be out there, that's great. That's fine. When it comes to giving those families tax deductions or anything because their kids are going to that, no. If, if they can afford it and to send their kids to another place, then do so. But the way our tax is organized and what have you, it is designed to help the whole community. And if a few handful of people want to step outside of that and go elsewhere, that's on their own. The public schools, though, you think work pretty well for how they're established in the current, in the historical form. Well, I've been hearing a lot that people are complaining about our school systems on what they're getting out of as an end result in the education. And yes, that needs to be focused on and, and bettering the education for the, for the children. Uh, but a, as the organization is itself, mm -hmm. yes, I'm for it. Well, you know, the Independent Weekly Magazine sent you a questionnaire and you, you posted all the answers to your questionnaires publicly on your Facebook page. Yes, I did. And I read them. 
And you brought some questions. The state budget is over 50 percent, uh, close to 60 percent in favor of public education and at least about 44 percent for everything else in this state. You question that. You want to say, where the, where's the money going? Right. Why do you ask that question? Well, they keep wanting to raise more taxes for, for the schools. And schools are already getting 56 percent of every tax dollar collected in North Carolina. So we need to look into where all that 56 percent of that tax is going to make sure it is being allocated in the proper places and that they actually need more money. We talked all about the money right now, but there's a few candidates out there who will throw their hat in the ring and discuss social issues. And uh, I was going to ask you, what do you think of the balance? Are voters looking for social issues that dominate fiscal issues or the other way around or, or balance them out? How do you feel about that? I, I feel that everybody wants a balance. Uh, when you're looking at your, your social issues and, and, and fiscal, you're looking into liberties of the people. And people don't want their liberties stepped on at the same time of balancing budgets and running a state and what have you. And we really need to balance it. When you go in as governor, if that happens, will you be going in as a partner with the Republican leadership of the House and Senate? Are you there to be, in a good faith way, a disruptive force to change the way politics are done, whether it's a Democrat or Republican in charge of those chambers? Well, I hope not to be disruptive at all. I hope that it, I can bring both sides together. I believe that anybody sitting in a public office is an open door policy. I, I, I don't believe that once you're in office that there should be a line between what party you belong to. You're there to represent the citizens of the state. You're not there to represent, you know, wh wh which party or what line it is when it comes down to that. And that's the biggest problem right now is, is that personally I feel that a lot of them are like children wanting to fight, well, that came from that team and we're on this team. We need to think about the citizens of the state. This is Jim Harney, a Cumberland County businessman who's running for governor in North Carolina. Mr. Harney, thank you so much for being on North Carolina Now. I appreciate that. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here.